Hi everyone, here is our math problem for today. If x is an element of the set of real numbers, find the value of x given this equation, 8 raised to x plus 2 raised to x equals 130. You can pause the video and see if you can solve this difficult math equation. Now let's solve this problem together. Let's begin by writing 8 as an exponent 2 raised to the third and we copy all the rest. Next, let's recall some properties of exponent. If we have x raised to a all raised to b, we can apply the power of power rule of exponent to write it as x raised to the product of the two exponents. But since multiplication is commutative, we can also rewrite this back as x raised to b all raised to a. We are going to apply this in order to interchange this exponent 3 and this exponent x to have this form. Then we copy all the rest. Now, notice that the base here is 2 raised to x. The exponent is 3. You can also think of this 2 raised to x as a base with an exponent of 1. And therefore, it would be simpler if we let 2 raised to x be equal to certain variable. And let's use the variable y for this purpose. So, if 2 raised to x is y, we can now replace by y this 2 raised to x to have y cubed. And do the same thing for 2 raised to x here and then copy all the rest. Then, let's recall this value because we are going to use this later on. Once we found the value of y, we are going to substitute back that result to this equation in order for us to find the value of x. Now, this is a cubic equation and this is a little bit hard to solve, but luckily, these numbers are chosen so that we can easily factor them out. So first, let's write this in standard form. Then, let's look at this variable y. We can also express this y as negative 25y plus 26y. Anyway, the sum of this is y, but the reason why we chose this is because we'll be able to factor out this given equation using factoring by grouping. So notice now that this y becomes minus 25y plus 26y. So these two equations are equivalent. Now, let's group together the first two terms and the last two terms this way. Notice that in the first group, there is a common variable y that we can factor out. So y cubed divided by y is y squared minus 25y divided by y is minus 25. Copy the plus sign and factor out the common factor 26. So 26y divided by 26 is 1y or simply y. Negative 130 divided by 26 is negative 5. Copy the right side equals 0. Notice that we have here a difference of 2 square. So we can now factor this out as two factors y minus 5 times y plus 5. All the rest are copied. Now notice that this y minus 5 and this y minus 5 are common factors as well. So we can perform again factoring by grouping and this is now what we have. Group this as one group and group this part as another group equals zero. y minus 5 is common to these two groups. So factoring out now y minus 5, we now have this entire expression divided by y minus 5. So we can cancel y minus 5 out. What's left is y times the quantity y plus 5 plus 26 times y minus 5 divided by y minus 5 is equal to 26. Then copy equals 0. Notice now that we have here two factors and the product is equal to 0. So that means we can now equate the first factor y minus 5 to 0 and equate the second factor y times the quantity y plus 5 plus 26 taken as one group equals 0. So for this equation at the left side, we know that y is equal to 5. And let's remember this value because we are going to substitute that in our previous substitution. Let's deal with the second equation. Let's distribute y to this binomial to arrive at y squared plus 5y and copy all the rest. This is now a quadratic equation that we can solve using the quadratic formula. And substituting now 1 for a, 5 for b, and 26 for c, we now arrive at this value. And notice that under this square root symbol, we have 25 minus 104, which is equal to a negative number, negative 79. That means this value is not a real number, but we require that x be an element of the set of real numbers. Therefore, since this is not a real number, then the solution to this entire equation will not be a part of our solution. So let's remove it. We are now left with these two values. We have 2 raised to x equals y, and y is equal to 5. So by transitive property, we now have 2 raised to x 
is equal to 5. Again, we are solving for the exponent, so we can use logarithm. So x is equal to the logarithm of 5 to the base 2. And by using the chains of base property of logarithm, we now have x equals the common logarithm of 5 over the common logarithm of 2, which is approximately equal to 2.3219. So this is now the value of x in this equation. And so this problem is now solved. So thank you very much and we hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.